Hello and welcome to Join Our Town. I'm your host, Tammy Jo Johnson. Join Our Town brings you the issues and problems that are faced in the local community with the hope of finding a solution. Our guest for this segment is Krista Pruitt, Prevention Coordinator and Project Manager for the Lincoln County Prevention Partnership at Pathways of Central Ohio. She is here to address increasing incidents regarding bullying, along with the policies that have been put in place to combat bullying in school. Thank you so much for being here with us yeah, today, Krista. Thank you. So before we jump into the bullying topic, because it's a hot topic right now, tell us a little bit about your responsibilities with the Pathways of Central Ohio. Um, we do prevention curriculum in Licking County Schools, um, evidence-based prevention programming to try to curb bullying and create an anti-bullying environment in schools. And through the partnership, one of our work groups focuses on violence, bullying, and suicide and tries to address those issues through ev holding events mm -hmm. or doing interviews like this right. and just educating the community. Well, I love it because they have finally discovered that it's needed in the schools and you're doing that in Lincoln County. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I guess we can start with, you know, define bullying because there's a lot of misconceptions about what bullying is. Yeah. A lot of people tend to think that bullying is strictly physical. So things like punching or kicking, pushing, pulling hair. Right. Um, but that's only one aspect of bullying and although it's very common and it definitely happens, there is also verbal bullying, so things like name calling, there's psychological and emotional bullying, exclusion, um, spreading rumors, things right. like that. And then in recent years we've seen cyberbullying right. come up. So saying nasty things online, posting pictures, and then that goes out into the cyber world if it's on the internet or in a group text to a whole bunch of people at that student's school and it can be just as damaging. Right, so, so then I guess it's safe to say that bullying really hasn't changed throughout the years, they just have different avenues now. Yeah. And they're additional. Yeah, technology can be a great thing. It keeps us in contact with people far and wide and we have information at our fingertips, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, yeah, it's created mm -hmm. another avenue for bullying. Wow, so tell us about some of the um, educational um, efforts that you know Pathways is doing to be able to spread this and get it into the schools. Because it, it can't look like an academic curriculum, so what does that look like in the schools? One of the major things that we try to do is build resiliency. So we build protective factors that encourage students to realize that there's a difference between tattling, which is intended to get someone in trouble, and reporting an incident, which is intended to come up with some sort of resolution that works for everybody. And then we also teach things to, uh, like building self-esteem right. and being able to say no if someone's trying to pressure you in a peer pressure situation and being able to identify friends and adults who you're able to go to mm -hmm. if you're having a problem. That makes a lot of sense and, and it's amazing that you guys are stepping up and doing that because a lot of kids don't know unless you tell them. Mm -hmm. So what grades are you guys working with right now? Historically we've been working with third through ninth grade classrooms. Okay. Okay, and does it, is that working out okay? Or do you feel like they should start it earlier? In your personal opinion, do you think uh, they should start it earlier? Of course, it should start really from day one. It starts with parents. And parents, believe it or not, are the number one defense against violent behavior and drug use. Kids listen and learn from their parents they from do. the day they're born. They um, but we also need to make sure that educators and adults in the school building and at track practice or at ballet class also are educated on the topic so that they're able to recognize when symptoms of bullying are occurring and be able to intervene. That's awesome and let's talk about this so bullying is one aspect and then there's the victims that are created because of the bullying but tell us the bully and the victim aren't they kind of the same? Uh, yes and no. Okay. Um, depends on what you mean by the same so they both require um, some sort of intervention, right? Uh, just in different ways. Okay. So in that way, yes, a lot of times we forget that bullies aren't born, they're made. Right. So that means that they can be unmade. So we just need responsible, educated adults to be able to step in and go, hey, Joe, or whoever it is, you know, who's being a bully, what's going on? You know, why are you acting this way? Right. I know you're such a nice kid. You don't mean to be hurtful. You know what's going on and reach out and try to figure out what's going on with the bully. Um, and similarly, the victim of the bullying, sometimes one of the things that happens is the bully or the bullied child becomes a bully right. because they've learned 
aggression as a way to lash out when mm -hmm. they're having a problem. And so they're upset, so they've learned, oh, well, if I'm upset, I can just punch someone because right. that's what the bully did to me. Oh, if I'm upset, I can just call someone names. So. And unfortunately, not just at school, but if the parents are abusing them too, mm -hmm. that's all they know. Yep, aggression so, tends to feed aggression. Right, mm -hmm. so how do, you, how do you start with that in the school when you're talking to these kids and they're beginning to open up? What's the support system like when they begin to do that? Every time before we go into a school, we encourage the school districts to review their policies that they currently already have on bullying. And the best policies have multiple parts. They're comprehensive. So they'll have the definition of bullying that will include all the types of bullying, all four types. Um, it will have a clear statement that says it's prohibited in the school and it won't be tolerated and accepted. Right. What the consequences are for the bullying when it occurs and encouraging bystanders to become upstanders. So the students who are witnessing the bullying to stand up for the bully if it's safe and to let an adult know that a bullying situation is occurring. And then from there, all staff need to be aware of the policy right. in the school. All the students need to have it clearly communicated to them. And then the parents need it clearly communicated because again, parents play a large role in bullying situations right. and defending against future bullying situations. Right. Um, so we try to ensure and help the schools create anti-bullying. Bullying free um, atmospheres. Exactly. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Mm -hmm. And because, I mean, with bullying being so, you know, prevalent right now, it's leading up to suicide. Can you speak on that? It depends person to person. Right. Every person's unique. Every bullying situation is unique. Um, but unfortunately, yes, there, it, bullying can lead to depression. We mm -hmm. know that for sure. And we know depression can lead to suicide. So not always a causation, but there's certainly a correlation going on there. Yeah. Definitely. So give our parents some ideas about how to tell if their child is either being bullied or is a bully. How can they tell with both sides of the spectrum? I think that the number one thing is that they're just constantly engaging with their child and that they're aware of their child's everyday behaviors, everyday actions, their feelings, and that they're just in touch with their child. Because even beyond bullying, being in touch with your child and knowing what's going on in their life and knowing their personality and the ins and outs of their lives can defend against all sorts of other behavioral health concerns. And I'm gonna say that because I have a 16 year old and it's difficult sometimes as a parent to kind of check in when they're constantly like, no, back off, mm -hmm. I got this stuff going on, people are getting on my nerves, it's hard. <laughs> yep. So how can parents still continue to be encouraged to do that? Because a lot of parents, and I've spoken to many of them, feel like, I just don't wanna get in their way or make things worse. Mm -hmm. What would you say to a parent that said that to you? Well, one, start young, so hopefully, you know, from birth you're having uh, clear, open communication. Mm -hmm. But if it's something that maybe you didn't start because you were nervous about it or, they put up such a wall against you, um, just keep, keep, keep trying. On. Because as their parent, the number one thing you can do for them is raise them to be healthy, productive, kind members of society who are gonna perpetuate those positive behaviors in the world. Okay. So just keep on knowing that you're doing what's best for your child mm -hmm. and ultimately what's best for the community and all the people that are gonna be interacting with your child. Right, and so that's the first That's the first thing that we need to do is keep the lines of communication open. Absolutely. What else, what, el what other signs can we look for as parents? Um, changes in behavior is a big one. So a lot of times, especially children who are being bullied become withdrawn. They might not want to go to school. They might come home with cuts in their clothes or bruises. Um, and actually they may start exhibiting signs of being a bully. Right. Um, they might start lashing out and becoming more aggressive themselves. And so, so that, and that, that's a note to parents. Now what about these kids? What can we tell them? To, how, can they, how can they even prevent from being a target or becoming a target? That's the hard part about bullying is that the bullying isn't about the victim of the bullying, it's about the bully because oftentimes what people are bullied over is things that they aren't in control of. Right. Their race, their height, their weight, all these things that shouldn't have to be changed right. because they're perfect the way that they are and we want them to know that they're perfect the way they are. We would never tell a child, well, if you just lose some weight, then Jimmy will stop picking right. on you, right. right? What we need to do is to create an anti-bullying culture and then talk to Jimmy right. or you know the bully and say, hey, what's going on? Right. 
That makes a lot of sense. And so this is an age-old question, and I don't know how you feel about it professionally, so I'm going to ask. Yeah. So what do we do in instances where if I'm a parent and I have a child that's being bullied, and I say, well, you need to stand up for yourself. You need to hit them back. What would yeah. you say to that as a professional? That's a great question because a lot of parents and people think that way, that, yeah, you need to go take karate or you need to take self-defense and you need to learn to punch back. Right. And, um, but, again, aggression feeds aggression. And so a lot of times that just spurs on the bully to bully more. Um, it could get either child in trouble. Um, it could get either child hurt. And most importantly, it sends the message to the child that aggression is an okay way to deal with your problems. Even if it's because it seemed like there should be a, a line. Because there's a difference in being aggressive because someone's being aggressive with you or taking so much to where it's enough. And, and, and as humans, we have a right to protect our body and protect ourselves. So at what point does, does it become okay for us to do that without being labeled aggressive? Right, so there's a difference between assertive and aggressive, which is actually another topic that we discuss in our curriculum is um, being assertive is not the same thing as being aggressive. Um, you're just standing up for your rights, um, using I statements such as, I feel blank when you blank, okay. and coming up with some sort of solution on how to correct it. Now, of course, you're being punched in the face, you're not gonna say, right. I feel hurt when you punch me in not, my face. Right, right? Not, that's not you a have, natural instinct. You, right, you have the right to block those punches and to do your best to get away. Mm -hmm. Now, when you are no longer the victim of the situation, when you have pulled away, then that's when you step away and you go find help. Okay, okay. that makes a lot of yeah. sense, wow. So, I mean, so you gave us some, some symptoms. What do parents do if they feel like their child is being bullied? What's, where, how can they get in touch with you? Where can they find more resources that will help support them? So depending on the community, um, Licking County has really great resources. Um, if you're not in Licking County, then I encourage you to reach out and find out what services are available to you. Um, if the bullying incident is occurring at school, the number one thing that they should do is go to the school, to the administrators, and address it with them. Um, but if they're interested in information, then they can certainly contact us at Pathways of Central Ohio or the Licking County Prevention Partnership. Um, our website is www.pathwaysofcentralohio.com, and they can go under the um, Prevention Services tab, and there's awesome. information there. Krista, wow. You know, we can go on about this forever and ever, but thank yeah. you so much for being here with us today because unfortunately we have to end, but thank you. We really, you gave us a lot of good information. We really appreciate you yeah. coming today. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. That's our program. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook at WSFJ-TV51. Join us again next week at the same time for Join Our Time. This program has been sponsored by the Trinity Broadcasting Network and is made possible by your telethon dollars. Your continual support can keep Joy in Our Town coming to your home every week. Write to Joy in Our Town, 7790 North Central Drive, Lewis Center, Ohio, 43035.